Hello there, this is Ron Wills coming back at you with yet another video. Demon Lovers. Now, this is a subject I've gotten into maybe one other video when I did that video called Devil in a Red Dress. And it's in the description box. And I was I thought about this subject as I was doing the last video that y'all saw about women going on a first date with a guy without liking a guy. And I said to myself, I was like, you know, those women who try to play men like that, it's not so much they have negative intention, but they think they're getting over. Or they, I, you know what, I'm not even sure what the motivation is. But one of the things is, sometimes those women, they're getting over on a sincere type of guy, but they don't realize Every time they do something like that, they make it easier and easier to draw a demon lover. Now, to understand a demon lover, you have to understand demon lovers are at the top of the pyramid. And I, 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 even more so than a pimp. And just to understand, just, uh, just to understand a demon lover, understand that there are men and women in our society who are different from everyone else their thinking and outlooks are different from everyone else it's even hard to say that the spirits of these people are human and i mean that literally these demon lovers are predators plain and simple they're like serial killers in a way instead of killing people they kill a person's spirit and they do those do so through sexual relationships Indeed, the vampire myths may have uh, arose from people dealing with these type of folks in ancient cultures. In fact, uh, the term demon lover, I got from um, a gentleman whose name I've mentioned on here a lot, uh, Master Yao and Yamache Morris. And this book, this isn't the master, uh, masculine book or master feminine book. And it's probably the only place, uh, the book he wrote about them, it's probably the only place he actually put the information in print. Because we're talking to some scary individuals. But he wrote it in this book called The Natural Blueprint for Set Sexual. Well, that's that's another book. I'm sorry. The Natural Blueprint for Relationships. And he refers to them as themes of the sexual underworld. Let me read what he had to say about them. The fiends of the sexual underworld do not necessarily look like demons we see in comic books. It is just the opposite. Most often, they are men and women who are above average in the looks department. Many of them look trustworthy and innocent on the surface. They have one thing in common. He or she is skilled at saying the things you want to hear. They might not have a degree in psychology, but they are very perceptive in sizing someone up. They have trouble relating to the opposite sex in normal ways, so they compensate by exploiting weaknesses and unfulfilled desires. The men know that no, most men are not as romantic or sensitive as the typical woman would like. So they learn how to be better at that than the average male. They listen for clues and act on them. These men are willing to take risk and do what is socially acceptable if it will please a woman because they have nothing to lose. They are not emotionally invested in the outcome of the relationship. They don't care about you or what you think about them. But they make you think they care very much. The female demon lovers know that most black men do not feel appreciated and respected by the black woman. And the first thing they do is show him how much they respect and appreciate what he is about. They normally dress in a provocative manner and make it clear that fulfilling the man's sexual desires is a high priority for them. They listen for clues about what, a man, what the man likes and then they are quick to act on them. These women are very willing to take risks and do what is socially unacceptable if it will please her man. They are not emotionally invested in the outcome of the relationship. They don't care about you or what you think about them. But they make you think they care very much. Now, even though that was written for an African-American audience, there are demon lovers in every race and culture. And like I said, they're, they're at the top of the pyramid. They are really at the top of the pyramid. They are apex predators. As much game as a pimp or a mac or a gold digger might have, they have nothing on a demon lover. And 
you know, I'm saying this and I'm telling y'all all of this just, you know, because when I thought about how some people try to get over, especially some women, I'm just like, honey, <laughs> no, because trust me, there's somebody out there just cruising along who will fulfill whatever mask you have of a perfect man and tear you up. And I talked about it. I talked about the women. Check out the devil in a red dress video. I mean, I'm not going to talk much about the women in this one. You have to check out that uh, last video for the woman's side. You know, that's the devil in the red dress. You know, this might be the devil wearing that Armani suit. Or if it's what a woman likes, you know, dress like a thug, whatever she likes. He can go there or dress like the church guy. I mean, I'm going to tell you what. A demon lover is literally a weapon of mass destruction. Now, I know you're thinking wrong. Come on, man, that's exaggerating. Now, think about something. There hasn't been a story like this recently, but back when people were really talking about HIV and AIDS, there would be a story in the media about a person intentionally infecting a large number of people with a, you know, with a HIV, AIDS, whatever, whatever venereal disease they carry. Think about it. A single man and woman can have unprotected sex with several hundred people and infect them. These men go, these men and women go in and out of relationships and have sexual encounters, you know, spreading this thing. And of course, those people are going to spread it to other people. You know, you put, you drop a demon lover in a community, especially if they're infected, and they can do some damage. Now, it's more than just being uh, carrying some disease. These the, these the men and women just do some evil ass shit for no apparent reason. And I mean, they just, I mean, it's just the pure dysfunction, you know. And, you know, it's funny. I thought about that because, you know, let's just say I've been around some demon lovers in my life. And, you know, sometimes people will, will ask you, like, show me some games, show me some tricks. I'm going to be weird with y'all. I could really show, I could really share some insights. Because even on my private site, I only go so far. And people, whenever I say this, I guarantee you three or four dudes are going to hit me up and say, hey, man, I'll pay you, man. Just tell me. It's like, nah, man. Did that before. I made a already efficient dog more efficient by just casually telling him a clue to look for on a woman that will tell him, give him an idea about her sex drive. And that dude ate it up. <laughs> I was like, hey, Rom, you were right. I was like, I won't be doing that again, you know, even if you pay me. You know, I don't want to be responsible for, you know, some woman being emotionally damaged for the rest of her life because of some casual shit I said without knowing the person. Because I tell you the truth, the only way I would share some stuff is if I, I see the person face to face. I've had time to observe them and I realize, you know what, they just want a loving person. And even then, I'd be reluctant. I still just tell them just enough. But nah, it's some deep stuff. Now, check it out. I know somebody would say, well, how did these people come up? How did these demon lovers go? I'm not going to get into the metaphysical side of it because that would blow people's minds and I don't know who's listening to this channel. But let's just say there is a spiritual thing there. But the average demon lover, the average one, listen to what I'm saying. The average one grew up in an environment where there wasn't any type of moral compass, right? Where it, the environment was prob almost always, in most cases, there, there's an exception I'll share in a second, almost always extremely dysfunctional, like extremely. Like they're around, you know, it could have been in a place where drugs were used. There's a bunch of crazy people in there. It was something, but it's very dysfunctional, dysfunctional to the point where as a child, they probably had to figure out like, oh, wait, I need to be able to read these people to stay alive. Like it, it's something clicks in, right? Usually the environment is devoid of any moral compass uh, such as religion or some type of ethical behavior system where they just kind of on their own. Now, they're already in that dysfunctional environment. Add another thing to the mix. They're probably more attractive than average. 
I mean, people can say oh, everything they want about game, money, and all that. If you look good, you're going to draw attention. And you're going to influence how people behave towards you and how they respond to you. Now, you, put, you, you already have somebody who probably don't have any morals or any restraint on how they exercise this power over people. So you got two things. They from a dysfunctional environment where they don't have any restraints. They look good, so people going to like really gravitate towards them. And then here's an ingredient: you're going to have somebody who probably has a very high social intelligence. See, a lot of times people talk about high IQs and stuff, but those IQ tests only test math and linguistics. And it's very limited. That's why you get a lot of very intelligent people. They can score high on an IQ test, but then, you know, have trouble negotiating for a couch or something. Or doing some stuff that would seem like common sense to everybody else. That's because there's different types of intelligences. And most of them aren't measured. You can't even put a number on it. All you can see is the uh, result. But what you have with demon lovers, they have a high social IQ. They can read people. That's part of their game. They can read people. They can size you up. They could probably see stuff in you that you can't see. A psychologist will probably have to train, go to med school, and then train for maybe 10, 20 years to match what a demon lover comes up with growing up. It's that deep. It's that deep. And like I said, they shoot, you can't really pick them out, you know. They ain't in the flashy clothes. They look like they go to church or something, right? You know, they'll be clean cut. That's the one who looks innocent and whatnot, right? You know? I had an acquaintance one time. He was bragging about his new girlfriend, right? And, you know, she was perfect. And he was, you know, she was just like, she was the bomb. Dude was ready to marry her, right? I met her, and I knew something was up. Because she was very, I mean, extremely beautiful. Like, extremely beautiful, very innocent looking, you know. She that type, she she looked like that type of sister that if she's walking down the street, dudes would give a dude, the dude with her would get props. Because she's very pretty, had a nice, you know, she had a nice, slim but shapely body, you know. Just a slight little nerdiness in her because she wore glasses. Not to say all women who wear glasses are nerds, but you could you could kind of see it. And she looked like that type that would just be cool with a brother, right? Except Rom had a chance to look her in the eye for a brief second. Just a brief second, and that's all I need. See, a little trick with Rom, if I'm in your presence, trust me, I can tell you all about yourself. In fact, many women have said I look like I got eyes that look through them. They I, Plenty have said I got piercing eyes. And I do. And I'll just look at him one time. And then I've told people some stuff. And he'd be like, Rom, how'd you know that? Yeah. I'll let y'all think about why. Anyway, right? I started to take him to the side and say, dude, man, you need to watch out. But sometimes you got to be, those situations, you got to be careful. Right? You got to be careful about it. Because, you know. You really, even though you can have a good feel for it, one, you don't know, you don't have any evidence. And two, he might not have received it at the time. But I remember I talked to him again a few months from when I met her. And he, she, he was like, she stole money from him, stole a car from him, and did all this dumb stuff. I mean, they ain't, they ain't just the sex with him. They'll empty out your bank account. Shit. <laughs> Dudes have, like... You know, dudes have dealt, dealt with them. They know. And some women. There's some women. There's a lot of women out there got some stories of some guy they thought was cool. They doing all this, you know, because he had pretty eyes. Well, he was cute. He had that quote unquote good hair. And I'm just like. And then they be saying, yeah, this dude, he done stole some money from me. You get situations. They found out the dude done molested their daughter or something. And you be, they, they be doing some evil stuff. And it's probably some bodies, like some actual bodies out there. You, they got some, they some vicious people. Now, like I said, most of the time they born in like that dysfunctional environment. But then you get some people 
it somehow gets activated in them. Like a good example is if, say you get some dude, right, who has never, you know, he had trouble with women all his life. Then all of a sudden, one way or the other, he finds the secrets, but he hasn't really healed that pain. That dude might be terrible. It's like that dude who all of a sudden, you know what, he hits the gym, he gets some money, his confidence gets up. And all of a sudden, or, you know, he went most of his young adult life without getting any sex. And all of a sudden, he's in a position where women throwing it at him. He might not be a kind individual. I mean, it don't happen that much, but it happens where it can it can come up. It, it takes a weird circ- set of circumstances, but it can happen. And that's why I'm like, I really, that's some stuff I don't tell dudes. Even if they ask me, and trust me, I've had to, they ask me, they do it, they, they, they think they slick about it. They ask me in different ways. I ain't I'm like, dude, I'll be like, just keep hitting the gym and stuff, man. Talk to a woman, talk to a few women every day. <laughs> Seriously. Because like I said, there's some cheats, but sometimes if you cheat, one thing I found, if they go through the cheat thing, but they ain't deal with any past pain, that you'll have a demon love. And I just want to share this because... Look, you know, like I said, check out uh, the link I have in the description box about devil in a red dress. You know, that's for the men to watch that. Men need to go with that. But this one, this is kind of for the ladies. It's like when you do stuff like think you getting over on a guy or doing you ain't you ain't correct with them. Yeah, you might get one guy. You might get two. But that one guy. Who you think is real cute, real cool, telling you everything you want to hear and making you believe it because he know how to push your buttons. That's the dude who will probably hurt you. You know, sometimes I tell women too, don't watch out for that guy to tell you everything you want to hear. You know, now the only good thing, the only good thing, it ain't like there's a bunch of demon lovers out there. And some people can avoid them, but they still out there. Like I said, they're apex predators and... You know, they like sharks. And sometimes, hey, if, you, if you're if you in the water, you see that fin coming towards you. Disappear. <laughs> Get away. You know? Because, then it's, hey, that's for the men. That's for the women. Understand, like, when you're dealing with somebody, find out what you're dealing with. And always question it. Don't. And see, you know, the bad part is, they hard to spot. For the average person. They hard to spot. Because they know how to stroke an ego. And they know how they can they can see they can see what you longing for. It's actually easy to do, but well, from my perspective anyway. But they they seeing what you longing for and they give it to you. So this is you know, I know I sounded a little I wasn't in my usual Uncle Rom type of tone, but you know, this is a serious matter. I mean, these relationships out here are serious. You know, people need to watch who they deal with, how they deal with people. Because you just never know. Anyway, something for y'all to ponder. Peace.